On August the 6th, Ukrainian forces invaded Russia's Kursk region, and on September the 12th, separate Ukrainian forces launched a second invasion, aiming to link up with the main force and trap thousands of Russian troops between the Ukrainian invaders and the border. However, as Forbes analyst David Axe writes, the Ukrainian armed forces appear to have become stuck south of the town of Veseloy and have been brutally ambushed there, losing their most valuable equipment. According to the analyst, around September the 20th, Ukrainian forces with German-made Marda combat vehicles, Swedish CV-90 combat vehicles and STRV-122 tanks moved along the main road connecting Veseloy with Glushkovo. However, there they encountered the 106th Airborne Division of Russia. Using mines, artillery, anti-tank missiles and drones, the Russians repelled the Ukrainian attack on September the 20th and subsequent attacks. Laying mines and firing artillery, anti-tank missiles and first-person view drones, the Russians apparently defeated the September 20th Ukrainian attack as well as follow-on attacks. A drone video the 106th Airborne Division posted this week depicts 15 or 16 destroyed Ukrainian vehicles, including some of the Ukrainians' best fighting vehicles. One or two CV-90s, a Marder and an M2 and Striker from the United States, Axe writes, The mix of vehicles underscores the importance the general staff in Kiev has placed on the Novy Put invasion. Companies or battalions from the 21st and 47th Mechanized Brigades and 95th Air Assault Brigade have joined the 225th Assault Battalion and 501st Marine Battalion attacking through Novy Put toward Veselo and Glushkovo. These are some of the best brigades and battalions in the Ukrainian force structure. But even these elite formations are struggling to get past Veselo and into Glushkovo. Unless and until the Ukrainians can advance along the main road connecting those settlements, their apparent wider goal, meeting up with the main Kursk salient, will remain aspirational. The Russians are also having a hard time in this area and are losing a lot of equipment as well. The problem, however, Axe notes, is that the Russians have a lot more equipment to lose. As Bloomberg previously reported, Ukraine will be able to hold the captured territories in Russia's Kursk region for several months or even longer. Russian troops are conducting only limited counterattacks, focusing mainly on operations in eastern Ukraine. Ukraine has expressed growing concerns over Russia's efforts to extend its sphere of influence through the deployment of the African Corps and allied Russian private military companies in several African nations. The Ukrainian Ministry of Foreign Affairs announced this. Russian mercenaries inflict an irreparable damage to the stability and security of the African countries, fuel internal spats and conflicts, cause an increase in human losses. They are engaged in illegal mining and expropriation of valuable minerals of these countries to finance the aggressive war of the Russian Federation against Ukraine, the statement said. Ukrainian diplomats state that immigrants from Africa and the Middle East who are being fraudulently or coercively sent by Russia to fight against the Ukrainian people regularly fall into Ukrainian captivity. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs appealed to such foreigners to avoid joining the Russian army by all means and, if sent to the front, to use the I Want to Live project at the earliest opportunity to voluntarily surrender their weapons to the Ukrainian Defense Forces and save their lives. We strongly condemn the Russian Federation's cynical use of African and Arab citizens as mercenaries who are utilized mercilessly by the Kremlin regime as cannon fodder in battles against the defense forces of Ukraine on the territory of our state, Ukraine's Ministry of Foreign Affairs emphasized, calling on the governments of friendly countries in Africa and the Middle East to publicly condemn such actions by Russia and take all possible measures to stop this criminal practice. According to the universally recognized norms and principles of international law and the UN Charter, Ukraine is a victim of illegal, unprovoked and unjustified armed aggression by Russia, the Foreign Ministry emphasized. Therefore, it is the international duty of all states that respect the principles and goals of the UN Charter to help protect the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Ukraine within its internationally recognized borders. Only through unity and strength, the world can give a worthy rebuff to the aggressors and invaders wherever they are, the Ukrainian diplomat summarized.
Over two years since the launch of the I Want to Live project, over 40,000 Russian soldiers have requested to surrender despite resistance from Russian intelligence agencies. The press service of the I Want to Live Unified Center for receiving appeals of Russian military servicemen for surrender reported the information. In the two years since its launch, we have received 40,157 requests on all channels, Telegram, WhatsApp, Chatbot and the hotline. The statement said, the number continues to grow in real time, despite persistent efforts by Russian special services to oppose and hinder such actions. Regardless of the situation on the front line, operations to evacuate Russian servicemen who have voluntarily surrendered continue uninterrupted and are consistently carried out by our operatives. On average, every two days, we evacuate members of the Russian armed forces to the Ukrainian side. The I Want to Live project emphasized the organization further emphasized that the I Want to Live project serves as a vital guarantee for preserving the lives of Russians who are being forced by the Kremlin regime to choose between dying under fire from the Ukrainian military or being killed by their own for refusing to fight. Earlier, the I Want to Live project reported that the hotline for the state program of voluntary surrender is receiving more direct calls from Russian soldiers themselves rather than from their relatives. Despite Russian forces appearing to have seized the initiative on the front line, the drastic figures reflect a persisting suggestion that morale among Putin's forces remains low. Tens of thousands of Russian soldiers have been used in suicidal human wave attacks throughout the war, and US officials have suggested that some Russian commanders are executing those who refuse to join in. Captured Russians can be swapped for Ukrainian prisoners of war, some of whom will have been subjected to brutal torture. In Ukraine, Russian prisoners of war are treated comparatively better as the authorities work hard to convene to the Geneva Convention on the Treatment of Prisoners of War, which includes offering three hot meals a day and allowing them to communicate with family back home.